Hello and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Life. Uh, it's a great day to know the Lord. It's a great day to praise Him and give Him thanks. And as uh, Cheryl and I come to you today, uh, we believe that God's Word is real, it's alive, it's quick and powerful. Uh, the Scripture says it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So whatever you're going through, the Word of God is going to change your day. The Word of God is going to uh, change your situation. And I believe if you'll just reach out to God and let God... Uh, be in charge of your situation, be in charge of who you are, then something good is going to happen to you. Something good is going to uh, transpire in your life, in our life. We believe God. Uh, we're getting ready to come into a new year. This is, uh, we're coming into the last uh, few weeks, actually, of uh, uh, 2019, coming into 2020, getting ready to go into a new year. God doesn't change His plan because the year comes. <laughs> But we, we kind of gives us a chance to kind of reorganize and say, uh, okay, God's going to do great things. And I believe uh, that if we, you and I, will come in agreement with the Word of God and with the power of God, we can see God do great things. Now, I'm going to try to slow down a little bit so I won't run off and leave my <laughs> darling wife here <laughs> behind. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we have a really good lesson for you today. And uh uh, before we start, as usual, we want to pray with you. We want to invite you to become part of the family of God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, if you've not been born again, you've never made that commitment, you may have went to church all your life, but you have never really made a commitment to the Lord Jesus and come into that relationship. We want that this to be the day. Wouldn't it be a great Thanksgiving for you and your family if you just committed your life and your heart to the Lord Jesus, you were born again, you became a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you go forward 2020, uh, coming up as a new creation, discovering and finding out more about the benefits of the kingdom of God, amen, and you can enter into and, and, and see the kingdom of God, understand what the kingdom of God's all about and what God's doing in that kingdom. Now, those of you that you're struggling in some area, we don't want you to go into this Thanksgiving and Christmas uh, uh, season, in, let alone into a new year, uh, struggling with your, your sickness and your disease and those things that are trying to attack you. Uh, so right now, we're going to stand with you. Get ready. Amen. Because God is about to move for you, and we're going to believe. Cheryl and I are going to pray, and we are going to believe God uh, that he moves for you, that, that every mountain, amen, I believe in mountain moving faith. God's building faith in our heart, and I want to uh, join you in agreement to speak to your mountain today, that that mountain will be removed, and you'll, be, uh, you'll begin to stand by faith on solid ground in the Word of God. Amen. Let's pray, Cheryl. Father, we thank you uh, today that as we come together, uh, Lord, we can agree on the Word of God. We agree right now by the Spirit, uh, God, that, you, that that one that don't know you today, this is the first day of the rest of his life. And in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now, uh, God, the, 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 I see a whole family that's, uh, that, that's needing a change, that's needing something to happen. And Father, I thank you right now that begins uh, by, by uh, being born again, by giving your life and your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and being born again. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for them. We ask you, God, for the boldness, the, the, the courage uh, to step out there and say, yes, I'll say yes to God. And I ask you in the name of Jesus that that be done. Father, there's people uh, listening to this video right now, to this broadcast, and they're saying, I've got mountains before me, and I don't even know if I want to go into a new year. And Father, I thank you, Lord. We speak to that mountain right now. Uh, God, that that mountain of, of, of burden, that mountain uh, be turned away, uh, be cast away and cast into the sea. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that oppression has to cease, that, that depression has to go. And God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, uh, Lord, that you do mighty things, mighty acts in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, in the name of the Lord, I ask you now, God, for anybody facing uh, sickness and disease as we get ready to go into this holiday season, God, and into a new year, uh, God, that you touch their bodies. You already paid the price by your stripes. We all have been healed. That includes every person watching this video today. And in the name of Jesus, we ask you, Lord, that you uh, begin to turn things around 
Uh, God, begin to manifest, mag magnify your name in their life. Thank you, God, that it's already been done, but we appropriate it today by the word of God, by our faith, we appropriate the healing power of God. And in the name of Jesus, we give thanks, we give praise for who you are and what you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Amen. Cheryl, it's a great day to, to be thankful and give praise unto the Lord. I, I, I'm telling you, when I read and look at all the things in the Word of God that, that, that Jesus Christ provided uh, whenever He died on the cross, when He took stripes on His back he was, uh, and He was hung on the cross for our sins, uh, our, our healing uh, in fact the word uh, uh, healing and salvation is almost the same I think in the Greek but uh, whenever we begin to look at what he's done uh, you know I believe it's uh, we, we said on I think it's on yesterday's broadcast or the day before one uh, that, that it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom God's not uh, you know there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the, in the uh, political arena talking about quick pro quo. God's not doing a quick pro quo saying, now if you'll do this, then I'll give you this. God's not, God's not going to do that. Uh, God's already appropriated. He's already freely given everything that pertains to life and godliness to us. The kingdom of God is now available to us so right now, he's not holding something back, Cheryl, and saying, I'm going to hold this back till you get everything right. Uh, no, uh, I, I believe we stand in faith and we continue to believe. And we're standing in faith with you. In fact, we're committing, uh, I'm committing to going into this uh, year 2020, uh, praying for you, believing for you, and knowing that God's going to do mighty things uh, in your life. But he's not going to wait until 2020. We've got uh, several weeks before, uh, uh, well, this is the 25th, I think, of, of 2019 when we're making this. Uh, but, I, but I believe uh, that right now we can begin to appropriate everything that the kingdom of God is offering us and we're going to be thankful and we're going to praise him for it. Amen. Uh, to, this is lesson 19 on praising, on thanksgiving and praise. And uh, we want to go to Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Uh, Shaw, I don't have the, the, the 12th. I think we we're going to read the, let's just read from the 14th. The, uh, Hebrews, the 13th chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. We're going to read three verses here. Uh, and then uh, uh, Cheryl's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, some verses out of uh, Proverbs. But in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, uh, in the 14th verse, he says, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Now, why are we seeking something to come? Because we want things to be better. We want things to be uh, more well, well. Let's just put it this way: We want to be heavily instead of uh, instead of hellish. Uh, so as we excuse my bluntness there, but uh, you know sometimes we create our own own uh, hell. We create our own uh, um, devil sometimes. Uh, but uh, w whenever we look at the Word of God, that there's a there's a continual searching for something better. Uh, Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. Uh, you know, he, where was he looking? He was looking right here uh, in this earthly realm and he was looking for things to be better. And I want to, I want to prophesy to you uh, that God wants things to be better for us. God's, God has not given us, uh, well, we have to go back to our, our famous scripture, John 10, 10, uh, the thief comes but steal, kill and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and you might have it more abundantly. That's what God's uh, paid for us. Uh, that's what Jesus paid for on Calvary. And we want to appropriate those things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. So uh, verse 15 says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Now listen to me. Uh, praise. Some, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll go and I'm just quiet. I'm a quiet uh, I know you can't tell it on this, these videos and on the broadcast, but uh, I'm really a quiet type person. I, I listen. Everybody else is just talking, talking, but I listen. Uh, but I listen deep until I hear the voice of God and know what God says. Uh, but he says, uh, By him, therefore, let us uh, offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. And, you know, whenever we praise God, there's a fruit of our lips. In fact, I believe all creation listens for what we say as believers 
Because what we say, we have the authority in the earth. Jesus gave us, whenever He ascended on high, He gave us all authority in heaven and earth, and we have that authority. And that authority is expressed uh, by the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. See, we're not going to we're not going to just give thanks by just uh, hanging back and never being a testimony and a witness. We give thanks when we open our mouth and we begin to praise Him. We begin to give thanksgiving. Uh, we begin to express the gospel, uh, and, and He begins to bring us into uh, that place where uh, we. Uh, manifest the kingdom of God uh, out of our out of what we say, out of what we do. Now let's read verse 16. But to do good and to communicate. Say that word communicate. Communicate. Uh, tell me tell me what communicate means, Cheryl. Um. Well, anyhow, communicate is an interaction uh, between two it's, people. It's, it's, a, it's a level of intimacy, if you will. And while she looks up, I'll still let her read it. But it says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. You know, uh, communication, that's what our thanksgiving and praise, we need to communicate that. You got it? And according to the Strong's, the Greek is partnership, participation, social intercourse, to communicate, fellowship, associate, all those kinds Amen. of things that we're familiar with. In other words, praise and, work and thanksgiving is, is an interaction between you and God. It's not just throwing words at God. It's an interaction spirit to spirit. Uh, the, one of the prophets of old says, deep calls to the deep. So there's a spirit to spirit communication uh, that goes on. Uh, it says, with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Now, I think you had some things uh, from there. If you want to take that from verse 16 there and go from there, Cheryl. Okay. Um, let's go to Proverbs 12, 14. Of course, we know the book of Proverbs has so many wonderful things to say about our thoughts, our words, and everything else in life. Amen. <laughs> but um, these two, I'm going to read a couple of verses here that go right along with what we're studying in Hebrews. And it's, the first one is Proverbs 12, 14, and it says, a man shall be satisfied, or a person, shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. Now, let's move right over to Proverbs 18 and verses 20 and 21. And we're familiar with these pretty much if you study the Bible at all. Verse 20 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. A verse came to, uh, to me sometime in the early morning hours, and I forgot about it, and I didn't think to look it up. But there's also verses in the Proverbs that tell us that not to be hasty with our words, and that when we're, well, to put it in our modern vernacular, when we're running our mouth all the time, it's going to get us into trouble. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, and uh, the point of these scriptures is, is that we want the fruit of our lips to produce good in our life. We want it to produce life in our life. So all of these um, scriptures are admonishing us to be careful with how we speak. And when we are communicating, not only with God, but with one another, to make sure that what we're communicating is going to produce fruit that's good, tasty, and is going to satisfy. And um, we, we know that as the body of Christ, we're to learn to edify one another, to lift each other up, and to help each other along, everybody has their own set of problems. The scripture's very clear about that. He says, no temptation has take, overtaken you except what's common to man. 
that's every man, whether a Christian or not a Christian, no matter what religion or no religion. Amen. These are just normal, natural things. However, if the fruit of our lips is bringing forth a lot of death words and words of destruction and words of woe is me and words of self-pity, things are only going to get worse because our words, our spirit, just like Jesus said, his words are spirit and they are life. Our words are spirit, but they can be either death or life. And when you put forth words that are spirit, something's going to happen. God created the whole earth realm as we know it, the plant and animal kingdoms, the human being and all of those things by the words of his mouth. And we do the same thing. So we want to create words and speak words that create a good world for us to live in. Amen. Amen. Uh, sure, I think... Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, we just become caught up sometimes in uh, the world, just to put it yeah. straight for the, the things uh, the world, we, we seem to talk like the world uh, and we seem to um, uh, just, just get caught up without thinking. See, there's the thing. If the enemy can catch us off guard, off guard right. and see, I... I you know, we, we have to let Holy Spirit uh, put a guard over our lips, right. uh, over our thinking, because, uh, you know, that's why the enemy tries to get us in a state of depression, tries to get us in a state of, of being, uh, feeling like, woe is me and nobody cares. See, and that takes us out of the uh, atmosphere of thanksgiving. Right. You know, in that atmosphere, we become... Uh, we, we don't we don't come we're not thankful for anything we don't we were not able to praise God but if through our lips we can begin to lift up the name of the Lord and through what we say uh, you know I believe it's the, the David said that the, uh, the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight O God so uh, right words and right communication as the the writer of hebrews puts it here right communication comes and we this again goes back to psalm one that we've already talked about in previous lessons that right words and right communication comes whenever we can meditate on the lord i have to be careful sometimes because i can get caught up in the news and all that stuff and that that kind of will you know i, I like to keep up with it but I have to be careful and, 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 and recognize oh, this, is, this is going too far and begin to back off and know uh, when to focus my meditation here on the Spirit. Let us meditate on God. Let us meditate now on what God's saying, what God wants to do in the earth. Uh, folks, we desperately need, and I, I say desperately uh, as from a human standpoint, but from a believer standpoint we're already victors uh, in the kingdom of god so uh let's focus let's meditate let the uh, our meditation and what god's doing and saying in our spirit uh really come forth to magnify the name of the lord jesus christ amen well, i was just thinking about i'm going to be 71 years old next month <laughs> And that's a long time to live, I guess, to some people. I feel like I'm just getting started. But I think back sometimes over my life and think, there's been many presidents in those 71 years, many different people in Congress, and many different situations and problems. But I've never done without. God has always kept his word. Even when I didn't really know God, I knew a lot of things about God <coughs> that I learned in church, and I loved God for what I understood. But he's always taken care of me. Amen. And he is always going to take care of us. And so getting caught up in the things of the world, and especially the political world, um, it's designed... The world, the scripture says Satan is the god of this world. He's not our god. He's the god of the world. So his intent 
is always to seek to depress people, oppress people, steal their joy, um, you know, keep you where you can't focus on God and to keep you from feeling the life and the joy that Jesus Christ brings. So we can't get caught up in all these other things that's going on in the world. Our focus has to be on God, on the Word of God, on Jesus Christ, and the empowerment that we have through the Holy Spirit living within us. We are new creations. We're different. We're not the same as people who do, do not know God and have not given them their lives to God. And we're to be an example to them, not participate in what they're doing. This says we're to do good. That's what we're supposed to participate in. That's, that's our job, to do good because these are the sacrifices. And it's interesting that God uses the word sacrifice there. Because sometimes doing good is a sacrifice, not always. But there are some difficult people. Um, it's people that we see. It's not like we see a devil in front of us. But anyhow, this Word of God is so perfect. And if we can uh, mature to the point where we understand it and obey it and walk in it, do good and communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. You know, I was thinking, Cheryl, the, the, the word sacrifice there. Sacrifice is, is anything that comes out, out of the, the ordinary. It's something that, that costs you right. something. For example, sacrifice, uh, a sacrifice of praise means you have to stop what you're doing in your ordinary life if you're just going uh, forward if you're whether it's uh, watching television or you know playing a game or or uh, whatever you're doing uh, there is a, a a time whenever we say we make a choice today I'm going to praise God you know I'm going to take time and I'm going to uh, forget that uh, may, maybe skip a meal now I know I'm meddling now when we're talking about skipping a meal but um, <coughs> you know the, the real truth of the matter is uh, whenever we do the things of God it usually uh, requires us to make a conscious choice right. to change our path or our, and our purpose it's akin to the word repent it, it's not like a well you sin or repent. It's like change your path for this period of time and and begin to give God thanks. Begin to give God praise and and worship. You know and that may not even be you know if your normal routine is church on Sunday morning that's not really a sacrifice. That's your normal routine. But um, but if on um, what is this on on uh, uh, Monday morning whenever you're uh, doing your regular routine or, or maybe during the, your lunchtime, you know, maybe you work your lunchtime, you say, okay, today I'm going to eat lunch with just me and the Lord. I'm going to give the sacrifice of praise. I'm going to magnify the name of the Lord. So the word sacrifice there, it's not like it's, you know, we think of sacrifice like, a, well, he's going to kill a lamb or going to kill a, uh, the red heifer or something. Uh, well, the sacrifice is something that costs us something. Something that we have to make a decision. We're going to give this to God. And when we give this to God, then God honors that. God brings it back in our life to uh, magnify His name. It's a laying down of our life. And, of course, that's the way Jesus Christ lived. Everything, He laid down His life. But um, I was also thinking there's a scripture in Hebrew somewhere, I think, also that says um, that we're to encourage each other while it's still called today. Because there are things that, you know, some, sometimes you go through seasons where there's just one thing after the other that could cause you to be discouraged and so forth, but... That's why we have to do good and communicate to one another, remind each other of the goodness of the Lord. 
And also, I think Roger mentioned it in one of our earlier lessons, that David had to encourage himself in the Lord, and we, we do that. We, we must learn to do that. These are parts of maturing as a Christian. And, um, you know, it's just, we just have to keep walking according to the Word of God, because God is going to keep up His part of the bargain. And his part is that we'll be blessed and that we will um, receive the things that God has promised to us. And all of this is to cause our faith to grow. Amen. And, um, Amen. Uh, excuse me. I'm, I wanted to tell you about a meeting we're going to be in uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, it's going to be in Carrollton, Georgia. Uh, I'll put more on Facebook about it. Uh, it's on uh, it's on December first. We're going to be there uh, at uh, his church in Carrollton, Georgia, and uh, I was trying to find the name of the church. I know the address, uh, so I was trying to. Uh, oh, Grace Covenant. It's Great Grace Covenant Church, uh, and uh, the address. Let me give you the address if I can find it here. Um, it's on Rome Street. I know that it's on Rome Street. In Carrollton, Georgia, but uh, we're going to be there at the 10:30 service uh, with Pastor Dale Carver uh, there in um, uh, Carrollton, Georgia. And uh, anyhow, it's one, uh, it's 11:47, uh, Rome Street, Carrollton, Georgia, 30117. Um, so we want you to be there. Make plans to be there. I'll try to be more prepared on the Mars program uh, to give you more details about it. Uh, but anyhow, it's Grace Covenant Church. In, in uh, uh, Carrollton, Georgia, I'm getting uh, the Rome Street and uh, Carrollton mixed up here, but uh, it's at 1147 Rome Street, Carrollton, uh, Georgia, that's Sunday at 1030. Uh, we're going to have a, a special time of the Word there. Uh, we're we're going to believe God that He's going to touch people, uh, move in a special and a mighty way. But with we'll be with Pastor Dale Carver at Grace Coming to Church this coming Sunday at uh, 1030. So would you... Uh, mark, mark your calendar for that. Uh, we're going to come together. It'll, it'll be right after Thanksgiving. Uh, so we're going to focus our thanks and we're going to practice what we've been preaching right here uh, in, in, uh, in these lessons. So, uh, amen. So, anything else, Cheryl, you want to share here? No, I don't think so, except to just say, let's work on this together. You know, uh, when we do things together, which that's more difficult for some of us than others, and it's harder sometimes to ask for help. But the whole thing with God is, first of all, He's given us a helper inside by the Holy Spirit. Amen. But He's also given us brethren. And we're all different. We all have different personalities. But let's um, look past the personality to the Christ within. And let's learn to communicate to each other good things and respect one another. And you know what? God's going to move through the body of Christ. And the more we come into uh, the unity of the faith and respect one another and honor one another, the more God's going to move and do supernatural things and we certainly want to see the manifestation of that. Amen. Uh, you know, just as we were coming to the end of the program today, I was hearing a little song, a little uh, that that uh, we used to sing way back. It's an old, old, just a kind of a chorus. There, it's not something that was hit the charts or anything, but it says, <laughs> "We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord." We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to Him the sacrifices of thanksgiving. We offer up to Him the sacrifices of praise. And that's our heart. That's what we want to do is to offer up to Him the sacrifices of thanksgiving and praise. And I'm praying as we enter into this uh, time just here, right here before Thanksgiving, we can really offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. 
and let God do special and mighty things in our life. Let's pray. Father, we agree with everybody listening today, God. Father, that you would just touch their life, touch their heart. Uh, God, in any way, God, God, give us the wisdom, the strength, uh, God, the, the, the determination to offer up sacrifice and praise in everything we do because your word says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. God bless and uh, we will see you tomorrow. We really believe God is going to uh, do mighty things in your life. So be right back here tomorrow.